Hello and welcome to Technofield.de. My name is Klaus and I'm presenting you the Alcatel OneTouch 997D Ultra today. And actually, this is not an unboxing. This is the full review finally. So let's do away with the box. Here's the phone. Let's have a closer look at it. Uh, so I've got a lot of feedback from uh, the unboxing video I posted in English, which was my first English English video ex actually on uh, YouTube. So excuse uh, if there's any accent or things like that. Um, so I thought, well, there is so much interest in that. Um, I'll have a full review of that phone also for you in English. So hope you like it. Um, let's have a look at this phone here. It's a 4.3 inch screen with uh, 480 times 800 pixels um, so it's uh, similar to the uh, Samsung Galaxy S2 which was the biggest the best um, Android phone last year um, so not really bad specs today these uh, this size of screen normally has a little bit higher resolution uh, like QHD uh, 450 times 960 but still this is this is okay this is not really a, a very bad grainy display um, so not that bad for a start um, looking around the phone a little bit uh, besides the screen and no buttons down here there's actually buttons on the screen so you lose a little bit of those pixels here you have the speaker grill up here Alcatel um, letters then the uh, the front-facing camera which is uh, I think it's just about 1.2 megapixels so well okay for video chats not much more on the upside you have the power button as usual and the 3.5 millimeters uh, headphone or uh, headset jack uh, on the left side that's actually quite clean there's nothing here on the other side right hand side there's just the volume rocker and on the bottom um, it's a quite typical layout. You have the USB uh, connector and the small hole for the microphone. Here is actually a, a, a little, um, not sure what to call it. Um, uh, you can put your fingernails in here and open it with that that way. So you need to put two two fingers go in here and then you can pull it apart and pull the whole backside off. That's actually kind of a rubbery finish here. I really like that. It's not sticky, but it is uh, not as slippery as the cheapy looking plastics that Samsung mostly uses uh, on their um, smartphones. Um, it looks nice, it feels nice. Um, really pleasant surprise for a rather cheap phone, actually. Uh, an 8 mega megapixel camera here with a LED flash. Um, here's the speaker, which produces quite a nice sound. Of course, not a hi-fi sound or something like that, but um, for a smartphone or for a mobile phone speaker, uh, it's okay. It's loud enough to uh, hear the ringtone and also hear a little bit of music if you have no other option of enjoying your music. Let's switch it on again and after we had a look around the hardware, let's uh, take a closer look at the software. We've got Android 4.1, uh, 4.0, sorry, 4.0.4 here on that phone, um, which has been slightly modified. Um, there is uh, actually new symbols as you see down here uh, as for the phone app, email, and uh, a browser and so on even uh, if you go into the um, app drawer you see that all the standard icons uh, that are offered by android are actually changed um, not a big deal but well uh, you need to uh, get to use to that if you had another android phone before another modification is the status bar up here or the notification area you have a, a set of um, toggle switches here. The first one is for the screen, so that's brightness, timeout, and the auto rotation. Uh, then you have the typical toggles for Wi Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, and so on, uh, even for the airplane mode. And then finally, uh, things around uh, the profiles. You have four different profiles preset here. You can define even more in the settings. So that's another extension. You have a, a complete profile management here where you can you know, turn your phone. Uh, silent uh, very quickly or adapt to meetings outdoor usage or whatever else so these are rather slight modifications of Android but uh, useful stuff 
well, besides the icons, uh, I could do without that as well. Um, another modification can be seen in the settings, and that's an important aspect because actually uh, we have a dual SIM phone here in front of us, the 997D, that D stands for dual SIM. Uh, on the international website of Alcatel, by the way, there is also a version without that D. Um, I know it will not be sold here in Germany, um, but uh, maybe uh, in other places of the world. But the D stands for multi-SIM, it has a dual SIM, it has um, two sl SIM slots um, and uh, an extra point in the settings menu here uh, for SIM management. And that offers actually quite a lot of uh, comfort, I think. Um, it, it looks very complete from the beginning, but there is one point missing which I'll come to later. First of all, you can switch on and off uh, each SIM card separately. Um, I'm doing that now for one of my two cards which are in here. Uh, you will now soon see that this SIM card basically has gone into flight mode. Um, you can choose for uh, voice calls, video calls, messaging or a data connection. You can separately choose which should be the default connection here, but you can also choose to be always asked. So uh, each time you want to do a call now, the, uh, the phone will come up with a dialog and ask you which SIM card do you want to use. So that that's uh, quite comfortable and it goes even further. You can actually, um, when going into the contacts, you can choose for each contact which should be the preferred SIM card for that specific contact. Really nice. But the one thing that I'm actually missing here is um, the possibility to choose the ringtone per SIM card because for example, I, I could very well imagine using such a phone uh, to combine my business phone, so, so my, my em employer's phone uh, and my private phone into one. And uh, of course, it would be very nice to hear by the ring uh, tone already, okay, that's a business call, I need to hurry up, or it's uh, something, something personal, um, I can wait until my lunch break maybe to answer that. So right now, um, as Alcatel has implemented that, you'll have to look at the screen of your phone to see which um, SIM card you're actually called upon. Um, for seeing that, you always have those two colors which you can modify. So here you have the set background color. You can choose from at least a few colors. Are there more? No, just four colors but that should be sufficient. Um, you can even enter the, um, the number that will be showed in a few places then uh, and you can also edit the name so by default that's a network name but you can uh, um, you could say there that this is my business uh, sim for example if you prefer that over the network name or if your two sim cards maybe are maybe on the same network. So that's quite comfortable as I said the only thing that I'm missing here is um, ringtone configuration. Of course you can configure different ringtones per contact but still that doesn't tell you on which number you are being called and it's of course a lot of work to to, uh, to configure that for all your contacts if you don't just have a dozen of them and if somebody calls you who's not in your contacts that doesn't help at all. So let's have a quick look at the performance of the foam. I'm not really really fond of benchmarks. I've done an Antutu benchmarks and I'm somewhere uh, around 5,200 um, points there. Um, before the system update that has been delivered uh, somewhere around uh, end of October, many forum users say it has been a little bit faster, almost 6,000 points here. And it also feels a little bit slower since then, they say. I, I haven't used it that much before that, so I can't really tell. But as you can see here, um, sliding through the different um, launcher screens, the different home screens, is, is really quite smooth, although I'm challenging the phone here by having a live wallpaper, which is using quite a bit of uh, processing power. I have quite a few widgets here, so I intentionally did that. Normally, my, my personal phone doesn't look like that. Um, to see how does it perform when I really uh, put some load on it. Um, if you do the same thing with the also dual core one gigahertz phone um, Sony Xperia P, you see an ex 
extremely jaggered or, or I'm not sure unsmooth performance so the Alcatel is performing way better here so they have done quite a good job of uh, adapting Android to their hardware although unfortunately it seems the last update uh, didn't bring any improvements but the, to the contrary it got a bit slower um, this also is, is visible whoops uh, basically um, everywhere you see a small um, kind of a hesitation or sometimes an, uh, um, a huge um, part of one of those icons here when you go into the app drawer. Now as I've done it before uh, it doesn't happen as uh, uh, again that much but um, you see that's the only part where animations are not as smooth. Um, people ask me about games, what's the performance on games. I have tried uh, Asphalt 6 that's included as a demo here. Uh, by the way, you have to download more than 400 megabytes for that, and then the uh, the data partition of this phone is already full. But still, uh, it's a quite a nice uh, car racing game, and it runs uh, very nicely on that phone. Uh, I also was told that Grand Theft Auto 3 and also Need for Speed um, Most Wanted work uh, nicely on the phone, so I guess there is there is hardly any applications or only few applications that will probably have problems on this platform. Um, one application that has slight problems is actually Angry Birds Star Wars. You probably know that, the latest sequel out of that uh, series. And let's have a quick look at um, a slight jaggered display here. Okay, here we go. Uh, that's a level in uh, Angry Birds Star Wars where you can see that these um, laser <laughs> projectiles or whatever that is uh, come in a, li in a little bit, they, they hesitate sometimes, it's not absolutely fluent and if you um, go play the game you see that there is always that kind of uh, small stops in there which um, are not really critical for the gameplay but it doesn't look as nice. Uh, maybe in extreme situations it, it may hinder also your perfect timing but um, I'm not sure about that haven't really seen that so far. Um, still it's a bit a bit annoying uh, if you wow if you go and close um, other apps that improves sometimes but not always. Let's look at the task manager. Um, but there is only settings running here right now. So um, let's restart that level. It's still not perfect. It becomes better that way but still it looks as is there a, uh, if there is a process in the background that does something like uh, twice a second or so and um, stops the phone from being absolutely flown. I, I cannot guarantee that this is not probably an app that I installed myself, I'm just realizing, but still um, maybe with uh, Angry Birds Star Wars this phone comes a little bit to its uh, uh, limits performance wise by everything else uh, really works nice and look let's look at some more serious stuff that you probably want to do with your phone um, by the way the home screen knows rotation since the last update that was one of the positive aspects of that update let's have a quick look at the browser and let's open a website that you probably don't know that as well as I do, it's my blog technophile.de. It's it's a German blog, so um, you're excused for probably not knowing that one. But I have a um, smartphone compulsion uh, table here, which contains um, uh, almost hundred Android smartphones with all their technical data. Um, it's basically all, all the Android phones that are um, available and in, in, in the public in in Germany. It is a very heavy JavaScript application. You can sort and filter almost each of these columns um, with um, JavaScript functionality. As soon as you do something there, um, you will see that the display changes. So if I remove, let's say, Alcatel here from that list, you can see, well, you can't see it right now here, but Alcatel already disappeared. Um, so it's quite heavy for, for the browser, but still you see uh, the browsing experience is quite okay. It's maybe not 100% smooth, sometimes a bit jaggy, but 
uh, it's nothing that hinders you in, in your work and pitch to zoom works really nicely so the browser performance is 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 really good and for a phone that costs less than 200 euros you see the current price in germany here less than 190 euros actually um this is really really good i think um also other websites i tried um there is i haven't uh, been able to 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 discover any problems performance wise here so for web browsing and of course emailing all the other stuff this is a really nice phone okay so what else do you want to know well I can't ask you it's just a video not a really conversation let's have a quick look at um, music functionality and maybe first look at uh, one of the accessories that comes with it that's actually uh, this set of um, earphones or it's actually a headset so you can also talk with it you have that typical button here where you can accept or and calls and pours the music player. Uh, it's actually an in-ear model here, which uh, I personally don't really like that much, but I know they are in, in, in favor for most of the, um, the consumers and uh, they guarantee a, a, a quite nice bass sound. And actually this uh, headset is a positive surprise. Normally a headset's coming with a phone as long as they're not Beats Audio or any, anything uh, specifically um, uh, a specific add-on on the phone they are normally really uh, just kind of a waste um, I, I hardly ever use one of the normal headsets for music listening this one is actually quite okay for listening to music it has a nice bass it, it doesn't really have uh, strong distortions um, you can still improve the sound by buying um, a headset for something like 20 euros or a bit more uh, so it's 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 not really hi-fi top class, but it's it's quite okay. It's much better than the average crowd coming with smartphones. So again, for a low price model like this one, a really nice headset and, and really usable. Also, calling, uh, speaking uh, with that headset works well. I did a few test calls. Uh, and uh, my peers told me I was very good to understand. I understood them as well, so uh, no problem with that. The same with uh, normal calling here um, using the, the microphone down here. Um, this also works well, so um, um, the, the speech quality is quite nice. Actually, talking about calling, there is one problem uh, with that phone, as soon as you configure the screen brightness uh, to be automatically adapted, um, you can do that with that uh, button up here that's now automatically, and then the three fixed brightness values. Let's go to the brightest one again. Sorry, that's uh, always the best for the video. Oh, what am, am I doing here? Um, when you use auto brightness, then sometimes the the screen uh, comes to life again when you uh, hold it to your face and, and talk and by that you can easily um, stop the call end the call or do other things and that's really annoying I lost two calls by that just on, in one day um, until I finally found out that uh, by setting the screen brightness to anything else but auto um, it is much better this this uh, bug doesn't uh, seem to appear uh, anymore so that's a, a nice hint maybe that can avoid you some trouble um, what else uh, can we talk about well the music app there is an they have added their own music app here uh, which is quite nice it adds a bit of an eye candy to the normal oops I didn't want to do that to the normal uh, music player uh, that comes with Google you can choose uh, to browse by artist, album, songs, or playlists. There is a default playlist. Oops, sorry. Default playlist here uh, for the recently added songs. Uh, when you go into an album, you actually see quite a nice um, a black and white picture of of the cover of that CD. If that's of course defined in your MP3 tags, um, that looks quite nice. Uh, nothing really big, but um, it uh, is the only application so far that uses the SRR, SRS sound effects. Um, you need to switch that on first, so let's 
start a song here is the SRS button right now as I don't have the earphones connected I will only see three different effects um, with earphones connected you will see five um, I can only recommend to keep SRS deactivated so you're also not necessarily bound to that application because to me it sounds horrible it uh, emphasizes bass way too much it uh, creates distortions so the the normal sound in the normal setting is really quite okay it's nice um, even with the with the headset coming with it um, so you can enjoy your music doing that and I just recommend to leave uh, SRS where it is switched off so far about listening to music of course you can also use the Google Music app um, but I think the, the one delivered uh, with a phone is slightly better. Both of them are pre-installed. Uh, also, I like the widget. It's uh, quite nice to see here. Okay. What else? Uh, Wi-Fi connectivity is really good with that phone. Actually, I have to say, I think this is the best Wi-Fi performer I've seen so far as a smartphone. Um, my Huawei s and 1, which you see here, um, is uh, so far used to be one of the best that I have had in my hands. I have tested the Samsung Galaxy S3, HTC One X and S, uh, Sony Xperia P and uh, a few others and um, none of them was as stable especially in tricky Wi-Fi situations as this one. So I have a few rooms here where uh, Wi-Fi connection is really really bad and uh, the Alcatel so far is the best one in dealing with that and uh, has a quite stable connection there so that's good. The GPS also works nicely um, in, a, in a, a quick compartion it showed a few less satellites uh, than my Huawei and also a, a few less precision but still um, it seems to be enough for navigation um, I, I tried Google Maps and also a free enough free uh, the, the application uh, both worked well with that GPS um, so no problem there but maybe um, with some other phones like the Huawei S&P one which has a bit better reception of obviously of, of GPS signals um, you have a bit more of, of a contingency if you go into bigger towns and then have less visibility of GPS but still it works okay um, let's have a quick look at the display comparing it to other devices Okay, so here we have three different devices uh, showing the screen brightness uh, of, um, uh, of them. Here we have the Alcatel 9 and 7D which is under test right now. Uh, that's the Asus Transformer Prime which with its IPS Plus panel uh, is, is one of the brightest IPS displays that I know of. And to the right we have my Huawei S&P 1 with an AMOLED display uh, which is also quite nicely bright. Uh, I have set all of them to the brightest mode, uh, but the, um, the, uh, the the Prime is actually in IPS mode, so not in the extra byte IPS Plus mode. And you see that they are actually uh, rather comparable. Uh, now I'm actually triggering things here by putting the phones onto the screen of the Prime. You can see there is not a huge difference. The I would say the um, the Huawei is slightly brighter um, than the Alcatel. Also, um, yeah, the Prime and the Alcatel are um, uh, almost the same brightness. Maybe the the Alcatel being the the of a slightly lower brightness here. But still, uh, I've tried it in outside usage, taking pictures in the sunshine. Well, it's November. It's not as bright sunshine as in summer but uh, still there was no real problem uh, taking pictures and looking at the screen of course you don't really want to use a smartphone in the in the real when the sun is shining onto it uh, even the reflections of the sun they can be really annoying um, but I think it's quite okay the brightness is is uh, is good enough for a smartphone and for a smartphone at that price tag again the Huawei is almost twice the price um, it is really really nice. Uh, just to to uh, be a bit unfair now, let's finally switch the uh, Prime into IPS Plus mode, and you see it's a, it's a little bit brighter than. Uh, but hey, that's uh, really one of the brightest IPS or, or TFT displays that we have. 
Okay, one thing to look at is actually the, the memory that we have on this phone here. If we look at the SD cards and phone storage, we see that there is a, something like 1.5 gigabytes for applications, so that's the data um, partition. I have a 32 gigabytes uh, SD card right now in here, uh, but that's of course not delivered with a with a phone, and about one gigabyte of um, data storage. So the internal SD card, as it calls in, in Android, some really confusing naming conventions here. So two and a half gigabyte more or less available for um, the user. Um, I have no found no information about the size of the system partition, but well, it's not really that important. Um, fact is, it's not a lot of memory. You can easily fill that, especially the data application, so the internal SD card. In the beginning, when I didn't have a, an, an, an additional SD card installed, I actually downloaded Asphalt 6, uh, the demo, which, as I mentioned, has more than 400 megabytes to be downloaded. Uh, and after that, I could only take about 12 pictures and the memory was full. So um, the, there is a need for... Um, putting a SD card in there, but hey, why not? They're really cheap by now. I, I bought this 32 gigabyte class 10 card, which is quite a nice one uh, for 28 euros here in the shop. On the internet, it would have been even a bit cheaper. So go ahead and buy, ride with a phone, a memory card. Um, a few gigabytes uh, will do you well. One aspect that I uh, actually realized just recently, and my German review um, actually tells you something wrong about that, it is actually possible to move applications onto that SD card, uh, which is an option that usually doesn't exist in um, Android. But um, obviously Alcatel, or well, it, it, it doesn't exist, sorry, it doesn't exist in uh, Android 4 point and so on. Um, but here, as you can see, obviously Alcatel um, was able to, to port that feature from the older 2.3 and so on um, versions of Android into 4.0. This is really nice. So you, I can actually move games and stuff like that onto the SD card. I did so for this Angry Birds version. I did that after I realized the, the jagginess that I reported about. So it's, that's not the reason. But you can actually move um, apps onto the SD card and as uh, you maybe have experienced that on 2.3 already not the complete application can be moved there but a big part of it um, so like 48 megabytes of the 50 megabyte Angry Birds Star Wars was moved onto my external storage so that's nice um, there is actually an app that I thought would do that um, for me when I first saw the phone here is a, an app called Apps on SD but is really strangely named because it's simply an app that can uh, pick an APK file from the SD card and install it. So something that every file manager can, can do, really useless app. And that's one of the downsides of that phone. It contains a lot of, let's say, extra apps. And I think most of them are actually useless or they are bloatware, um, advertisements, or whatever you want to call it. So you have a lot of Gameloft stuff in here. Um, a gaming portal, 100% games. You have Asphalt 6 demo, Assassin's Creed, which you can play uh, the full 180 seconds. Wow, three minutes of game. Cool. Um, you have a few other Gameloft uh, games on here and a lot of other stuff. Um, I'm really not fond of that much bloatware coming with a phone, but one nice aspect of that is, here is a pinball for example, oops, I didn't want to start that, I just wanted to go into the uh, properties, no, didn't, let's have a look at the app info, um, I actually see I can't move that to the SD card, but I could uninstall it if I'd like to, I'm not going to do that right now, but um, I have uh, been confirmed by readers of my blog that they were actually able to remove apps from that phone. So this is not a big problem. You can actually get rid of that. But still, I, I would prefer Alcatel to, to put less stuff on the phone. I just it, It's just already so cluttered and, and, and so, well, ugly with uh, all this stuff here on 
um, please don't do that in the future. Right now I even have two antivirus apps on here, which um, I, I didn't install either for either of them. So that was actually also done by Akatel. Well, strange. Um, I talked about taking pictures and the memory being filled quickly. Um, let's have a quick look at the camera performance. It is an 8 megapixel camera, as I think uh, told before. Um, it's not really great, but it's also not really bad. So if you zoom into pictures very closely, you see what looks like a very high compression. Actually, the pictures taken by the original um, camera app on the phone um, are or rather small for 8 megapixel files, so they're uh, mostly around 1 megabyte or sometimes even much smaller. So um, this doesn't this is obviously uh, um, there is a high uh, compression going on. Now the um, pre-installed app doesn't allow for um, changing this quality or improving that quality a lot. Um, and also videos are limited to the smaller HD resolution, so 1280 by 720, and they are not very smooth. So if you if you pan around your garden, for example, you will probably have some stuttering in there. It's not really that nice. But the pictures are quite okay, as long as you don't do any pixel peeping like this here and uh, um, want to really make use of the full 8 megapixels, as long as you're okay of, of um, with looking at these pictures, let's say, on a normal um, screen size, um, you, don't, you won't see that many problems. One thing that you might realize is that the colors are oversaturated. So in this picture here, the, the trees that you see behind, they look almost red or they have a reddish tint um, that didn't exist in reality and the pictures taken with other cameras also don't show that. They are more like yellow golden color here. But still, the camera is okay, it's not the best one. The, the one of my Huawei S&P one is by far better, but still for a mobile phone camera, it's, it's quite acceptable. It's nice to have um, um, a camera with you for a quick shot when you um, didn't expect to, to, to see something that you want to take pictures of because, uh, well, you have your smartphone always with you. So I'm not doing any testing shoots or just one uh, with you today. Normally I go out into the garden and take some nice flowers, uh, flower pictures. But, um, well, right now it's almost winter. Um, let's skip that part. It's dark outside right now. But one thing that I want to show you is the, actually the flashlight. And that's um, quite of a big disappointment. Let's um, switch that on. I have switched it off and there is a good reason for that because uh, just have a look at what happens now. Taking a picture and you probably already saw that while the picture was being taken now here in the picture you can see it. First of all the the, um, the, the area is illuminated very badly even if, if, it, if the, the table was reflecting as it, it is, as it is here. If you take a picture of a white wall you see very dark corners, you see very ugly yellowish stains on the picture so obviously this this uh, little LED flash here uh, doesn't really deliver a nice uh, performance, it doesn't deliver a nice white uh, and, and, and equally balanced um, light uh, so uh, my recommendation switch it off, keep it switched off and uh, probably only use it as a torchlight um, when, when needed um, talking about torchlight, there is an LED torch application pre-installed, uh, the typical one, but if you look into the details of that application, you can uh, get quite a shock because if you look at what rights this application had, has, I, I think I haven't ever seen uh, an application that has so many rights. And definitely not a simple LED torch application. So it can do phone calls, can do various things that will cost you money, uh, can send messages, has full network accessibility, Bluetooth, whatever else. Why the hell do they need that for an LED app? Well, I'm, I'm quite sure it was just a stupid error of the programmer or of the, peop the person who packed that app uh, application into um, an installable file. But still, it's it's quite embarrassing for Alcatel um, what they have here. I, I contacted contacted them 
uh, and we'll see if they react on that. Um, I would recommend them to, to quickly provide an update for that application because it's, it, it's of course, um, worrying a little bit that such a small app um, has so many rights. Um, I don't expect it to really do anything bad, but of course uh, it, 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 it just um, makes all the security measures that Android has built in useless. Well, so far from here, some critics in the in the end, um, but overall, I have to say this is a really nice phone for a really affordable price, as I mentioned before, significantly below 200 euros here in Germany. I'm not aware of the detailed pricing in, in other states in, 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 uh, in Europe. Uh, I know it should be available right now in, in a lot of places all around Europe, so um, don't, don't be worried if, if, if it didn't arrive in your place yet, it should come there as well. Um, it, uh, it is, it, there is almost no competition in that price range. There is one phone which is very similar and I guess it contains a lot of the same hardware inside the Mobistel Sunus 2.1. Not sure if that's internationally available. It's, uh, it seems to be a German company distributing that under that name. Um, it's 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 about the same. It has extra buttons down here, so it doesn't waste screen space for the buttons. Um, it only has a half gigabyte of RAM, and it is about the same price. So um, these two are um, without any uh, real comp. Uh, competition in their price range because below 200 euros dual core 1 gigahertz nice uh, screen 4.3 inch with a decent resolution uh, is really hard to get and on top of that even a dual sim functionality with a quite a nice integration into android well done alcatel that's really uh, a lot of bang for the buck um so um if you're looking for a phone of that size and of that type if you're looking into dual sim functionality uh, it, it's I think it's a good recommendation. Um, maybe have a look at my smartphone comparison table. Um, most of the data there is English anyway. Um, gigabytes and, and megapixels and so on are the same in any language. Um, so you, it might also be use for use of you if you don't speak English. And you will see that the, the only phone that comes close to that is the Samsung Galaxy S Duos. It costs 50 euros more. It has, so to say, half the CPU, only single core, one gigahertz. It has half the RAM, just 512 megabytes. Um, it, it has this, these, this cheesy looking reflective um, a plastic that Samsung these days uses for their phones, even for the S3. I don't understand that. It's so ugly. Um, so it, it's, it's a lot less a phone uh, for quite a significant uh, add on the price. So I, I can really recommend this uh, Alcatel phone here. Uh, there are only a few downsides, as I mentioned before. Um, most of them can be uh, worked around. So um, nice phone if you're on a budget and don't want to have, uh, a, let's say, a little bit more luxurious thing like the Huawei S&P one, which is that nicely thin and uh, has a little bit more processing power as well. Then go for it. Um, if you need dual SIM, then there's uh, not that much competition at all even if you, you know, go for higher prices so um I really uh, i can just recommend that so i hope this test review my first english one was uh, this uh, was uh, of help for you i'm sorry for stuttering around a bit it's getting late also um please uh, have a look at it again at my channel uh, there was so much uh, feedback on the unbox unboxing of that phone um, and uh, if, if there is a similar amount of interest in that phone here, I think I'll probably do more English uh, videos. So maybe you want to bookmark uh, or, um, well, I'm not sure about the English word. You want to keep an eye on my channel anyway and um, see for the videos there. So hope to hear from you. Hope to see you again on my channel. Uh, my name is Klaus for Teshnafieldi. Bye bye.